Everybody, you are about to watch the Fala Bible Church program, the moment of transformation. Today, by the grace of the Lord, we shall listen to our pastor, General Superintendent, Pastor W.F. Kumoyi. You are going to be blessed. It is my wish that you call your family to come and listen to you, as our pastor is blessing you with his holiness message. We know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're looking at 2 Peter chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 9. 2 Peter chapter 3. We're looking at verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is not suffering towards all, towards what? Not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance. And we find the mind of the Lord, the will of the Lord, the desire of the Lord, and the plan of the Lord as well. He wants everyone saved. You must understand that God understands and he knows what happens in eternity. After we leave this world, he knows the pain of hellfire, the sorrow of hellfire, the eternality of hellfire, the infinity of hellfire, the continuity of hellfire. And he does not want anyone to go to such a terrible place. In fact, Jesus said, it's a place where they walk, their walk dies not, and they keep on living forever and forever. Over there, in the place of torment. And the revelation says that the torment goes up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night. Anyone that goes there, and the word of God says to that uh, rich man that a uh, go to hell, that you cannot pass from here to there, neither can those who are here on Abraham in Abraham's bosom, neither can they pass to this side. And because the Lord knows how terrible that place is, and the joy of heaven, and the peace in heaven, and the glory in heaven, and the rest in heaven, he wants everyone in heaven. Praise God, you'll get there. Yeah. And then it's not only he wants all the members of your family to get there. He wants all your neighbors, your community, everyone to go there. That's why to avoid hell and then to inherit heaven. It says the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. It says it's coming. Why has he not come? Because you still have a work to do. Why has he not come? Because he's long-suffering. Not willing that anyone should perish, whether it's a man or a woman, whether born on this side of the fence or that side of the fence, whether of this religion or that religion, he doesn't want any to perish. It's very clear in the word of God. And then it says, but that he wants all. How many people? All. I said how many people? All. That all should come to repentance and that's why the lord is reminding you and everyone that is faithful to this the lord is going to reward you he'll reward you here on earth he'll reward you in heaven and great will be your joy in jesus name there are many people that are asking for lord do this for me do this for me and the lord is saying that's easy i can do all that for you i can do much more for you how about you turning around and do this for me and do this for me? And then you'll be surprised what great things the Lord will do in your life. If you will just for a moment forget yourself. If you will just for a week, for a month, for a year forget yourself. And think about other people, it will surprise you the lengths and the height and the place the Lord will take you to. All those things to say, God, how about this? How about this? God will resolve everything. Because you are concerned about him and you are concerned about what concerns him with you. It will be concerns about what concerns you. First Timothy, I'm reading from chapter 2. In First Timothy chapter 2, here we're reading from verse 4. It says, who will have all men to be saved? I think I need to allow you to open that verse of scripture. For you to see yourself. 
that this is the watch of the Lord, inspired by the Spirit of God. It reveals the will of God. It reveals the mind of the Father. And in talking about the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, in talking about God, he tells us in verse 4, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. Are you there already? It says, who will have, what's the next word there? All men. Who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. It's not the will of God that you or me or any of our people shall come, shall, shall perish. They will not perish. If we will rise up with confidence, rise up with faith, rise up with confidence and with faithfulness and do what the Lord has called us to do, thousands through you will be saved. Amen. Millions through us will be saved. And you'll be surprised how the Lord will bless you abundantly. And I reveal something to you. Have you found any time you find the children of Israel, for example, in the wilderness, you know, they'll get sick, a serpent will bite them, and this and that. Think about Joshua. Joshua was there, and the serpents did not know where Joshua was living. Think about Caleb. And Caleb was there, and the serpents did not know where Caleb was abiding. And think about Moses. And Moses was there, the serpents did not get direction, the direction of Moses. Why? They were faithful to the Lord. They were not praying for themselves. They were not asking for themselves. Oh Lord, heal me. Oh Lord, deliver me. Oh Lord, do this for me. Do that for me. No. Because they were serving God. God said, you will serve the Lord your God. Am I talking to somebody there? Yes. You will serve the Lord your God. And I will bless your bread. Give me a good amen. Yes. I will bless your water. And then it says, I will take sickness out of the midst of me. Not because you are fasting. Not because you are praying. Not because you are asking every day. Do this for me. Do this for me. Just because you are serving the Lord your God. If you will pick up this service of the Lord. God will surprise you. Yeah. He will surprise you with multiple miracles in your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. Have you found any time that Jesus Christ had to pray for Peter, John, James, Matthew, the rest of them? And Peter saying, I'm so sick. And I'm so down. And I'm tormented. I don't know whether this is a cause of my background in my family. Never. You know why? Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. As we were following the Lord and serving the Lord. And they were serving other people. They were preaching to other people. They were bringing other people into the kingdom. The Lord took care of them. He will take care of you. All he wants you to do is to be faithful in what he has called you to do. And as you are faithful, faithfully doing that. It's good when our leaders, our pastors can, you know, pair us two by two and go out on Saturday and go out on Sunday. But even when they are not doing that, you yourself understanding this is my calling. And this is the calling of the Lord for me. And this is what I'm going to do. Whether they compel us or not, tell us or not, push us or not, drive us or not, draw us or not. This is my calling. I'm going to do it. Something great will happen in your life. And hey, look at the mind of God. Why don't you come in agreement with God that all the people around you, as God wants them to be saved, you too, you want them to be saved. As He wants them to hear the gospel, you too, you want them to hear the gospel. And you're saying, nobody will pass in my presence or cross my way. I must tell them about the love of God. Look at this again in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. It says, Who will have, tell me again, how many people? All men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for a few people, a ransom for the white people, a ransom for how many people? Oh, you see that? He gave himself. Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away, taketh away the sin of the world. This is for everyone. This is for you. And it says, for it says, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in the in due time. You will do it. And that's why we're talking about uh, the soul winner today. We're talking about the Christ-like soul winner. The Christ-like soul winner. 
and there are many kinds of soul winners. There are some way soul winners that grudgingly they go ahead and will do something. And there are some tired soul winners. There are some ignorant soul winners. There are some, there are some people like Jonah. They go to do it, but against their will. It's like, if I cannot avoid this, if this cannot pass me by, all right, to oh God, I will do something. And you do it grudgingly. But we're talking about the people that love the sinners to be saved. They want the sinners to be saved. And they give themselves.